all rise. Almighty and all wise God, once again come to you. That's the name of your Son, my Savior Jesus. I'm thankful, Lord, that you give us the privilege of telling you about things that you already know. And I'm glad that you know our needs, Lord, and are able to meet them according to your riches and glory. You know the day that we're living in, you know the division in our nation, you know the desperate times. You know the problems, Lord, that we face being small. And I pray, God, that your people, that you might enable us to see beyond what we can see with our natural eye, to that which we can only see by our spiritual eye, to see that which is unseen. Father, I know that uh, you can bring about a change in our lives when we submit to you, Lord, when we surrender. We forsake in you in America. You've seen and we've gone away from your precepts and principles, and we've got what we've got today. As long as you're on for other grace and mercy, we'll never see you Pray that you'd be as near as the need be as it's represented in our nation. Bless our president, our governor, bless Brother Bill, Lord, as the mayor of this sweet city. May you bless every councilman that serves. Every person on the police force, Father, from the oldest to the youngest member, to care for them as they care for us. All of our emergency personnel, Lord, God, that's willing to put their life on the line for others. Pray that you would just bless. Thank you for a nation, God, that can still save one nation under God. Thank you for the promises that you've made, the power that you possess, and the fact that you're coming here. Until the day we can look on it. Continue to look to you, Jesus. Amen. Mr. Elliott, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Steve Arnett? Here. Mike Scipio? Here. Doug Fleshman? Here. Greg Hudson? Here. Greg Wolf? Here. Connie Thompson? Present. Jim Hughes? Here. Linda Ball? Okay. For being present, I declare the meeting of the Dunbar City Council of June 15, 2020 in order. First item on the agenda is June 1st. Council meeting Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the council minutes of June 1st, 2020, as written. Second. There's been a, tip, a motion by Councilman Scipio to, I mean, Councilman Fleshman uh, to approve the minutes of the June 1st, 2020 council meeting. Uh, seconded by Councilman Scipio. Any comments, clarifications? Yes, sir. Uh, one, one note of uh, correction that the uh, first, first sentence of the roll call, the uh, invocation was given by Pastor uh, Tom Price, it says associate pastor, word associate. It was originally going to be associate pastor, uh, Greg Wallace. Okay. Did Tom, was he last year last year? He was here last year. Oh, yes. Uh, is there a motion to accept the amendments? Second. Okay, we're going to take a motion to accept the amendments. I'll make a motion to accept the amendments. That's right. That you're correct. That the pastor Tom Price's name. I'll second it. Tom Price's name. I'll second it. Yeah, yeah those, those motion was as written. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's been a motion by Councilman Fleshman to amend the approval of the minutes to reflect the correction on page one, from, uh, striking the word associate after 
protective process. Today, again, the second the council won't. Any further questions, comments, clarification? Being done, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Extensions done, no appearance. Next item on the agenda is transportation grants. Uh, I'll just go through it because we've already pretty much accepted it, but <coughs> council has in their packet uh, a certification from the, from the governor where we've been awarded the West Virginia Department of Transportation and Transportation Alternatives, Gross Cap Avenue, Gross Cup Avenue, ADA sidewalk project. Total project cost is $90,000 in the announcement by the governor. He said it was a $90,000 uh, project. I think it was kind of it was a $90,000 grant. It's actually it's a $90,000 project, a $72,000 federal state grant, and an $18,000 city city grant. Does anybody want to? Speak to that or anything to it. Just to bring it out here that we are moving forward with our sidewalk repair project. Uh, we'll be working with the regional council to get the other items that were omitted uh, of this funding cycle and it's the next funding cycle to uh, concentrate on the sidewalks in the, uh, in the business area of the city and start. Start moving out to other areas once we get this, this area of the town taken care of. Yes, ma'am. Can you speak up for these things here? I can't hear you. Total loss? Please. Well, turn your attention down. Thank you. I need you. You're saying you turn it down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put the heat to us, yeah. You want the heat? No, no. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just turned it up to 74 is all it is. Okay. Thank you. I, if, if we get it any louder, it starts beating back. I'm, I'm sorry. We had to move the tables down there. It does create a problem. Y'all hear better? Yeah. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but there's Jim over here. Wherever you can hear, move to. Okay, that is nothing else. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda is invoices for payment. Mr. Mayor, we reviewed and finance uh, our invoices, and so I make a motion we pay a total of $177,535.56 for this period. Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? There's been a motion by Councilman Hudson to approve invoices for payment in the amount of $177,535.56. Seconded by Councilman Scipio. Is there any further questions or comments, clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions? None. Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is payment of invoices prior to July 1st. And Mr. Mayor, this is again our standard procedure when we get to this time of the year. Since this is our last meeting, uh, I ask to make a motion to approve the city clerk to pay all invoices from tonight until the end of the year june 30 anything dated prior to july 1 and then she'll give us an accounting at the next meeting so everything's accounted for this way we pay all the bills have everything clean as we start the new year so make a motion for approval to the clerk to pay all invoices dated prior to july 1 2020. i'll second it there's been a motion by councilman hudson to authorize city clerk to pay all invoices dated prior to July 1, 2020. It was seconded by Councilman Hughes. Any further 
comments or questions or clarifications. Uh, just for the record, the reason this is important, uh, we operate under the accrual method. So the more that we pay before July 1st keeps us from having to go back in July and filing a bunch of amendments with the state. So it makes it much easier uh, to clean up our books and keep our books clean when we start to start the new year. So with that, uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. Uh, the next items uh, are all ordinances and resolutions and mm -hmm. will require a roll call vote, even if I ask you. <laughs> okay, first item is resolution of city council uh, for a, an internal budget adjustment. <clears throat> the city council does hereby direct the city accountant to make the internal budget adjustment that needs to be made within the department. Just, okay, I'll second. There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio uh, to approve the resolution of the City Council to approve the end of the year internal budget, adjust, budget adjustment, seconded by Councilman Hudson. Any further, any comments, clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate, ah, oh, that's the SR to do it. You still have a roll call. Steve Arnett? Yes. Mike Scipio? Yes. Doug Fleshman? Yes. Greg Hudson? Yes. Greg Wolf? Yes. Connie Thompson? Yes. Jim Hughes? Yes. Linda Bogus? Yes. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, the, the next item on the agenda is uh, the amended first reading of Ordinance 786 to renumber it as 787 to make it a criminal offense. The enter or trespass and a condemned abandoned posted structure. Uh, when preparing the ordinance, I, I didn't put the correct number on it for the first reading, so this would be a uh, an amended first reading to or amended amending the first reading to change the uh, the number of the ordinance. It doesn't affect the uh, the title or the uh, or the content of the ordinance. I'll make a motion that we amend the first reading of Ordinance 786 to be renumbered 787. Second. Who seconded? Great. 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 Any comments, clarifications? Being done, Ms. Walker. Okay. <clears throat> Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Dunbar, West Virginia, that Part 5, Article 533, offenses related to property, subparagraph 533.02 of the Call of Five Ordinance of the City of Dunbar, West Virginia, as amended. Be amended as following. Be it further ordained by the Council of the City of Dunbar, subvary paragraph 533.02 of Article 533 of Part 5 of the Qualified Ordinance of the City of Dunbar. We just keep repeating ourselves. <laughs> we, have, we have voted on the amendment. We see a roll call vote on the amendment from 8687. To, to amend the, the to renumber that ordinance and vote on that. Yeah, do the roll call vote for me. Oh, okay. Me, on the, on the okay. First Sorry. Day. Sorry. Steve Art. Yes. Mike Scipio. Yes. Doug Fleshman. Yes. Greg Hudson. Yes. Greg Wolf. Yes. Connie Thompson. Yes. Linda Baldwin. Yes. yes. Jim Hughes. Yes. I know they're out of order. It just calls her out of order. <laughs> Okay, next item is second reading of Ordinance 787. Sorry. 
Okay. Order 787. Be it, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Dunmore, West Virginia, that Part 5, Article 533, offense related to property, subparagraph 533.02 of the Qualified Ordinance of the City of Dunmore, West Virginia, as amended. There is one mistake in it that I will correct in the next little paragraph. It's 533.01, but it's supposed to be a 2. So we will correct that on the I'll move we accept uh, ordinance 787. Second reading. Second. Any further comments, clarification? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, just so everybody that's watching on the internet knows, this is changing it so that if somebody enters a condemned property and then instead of being a fine only as in the past, it was never followed, they never paid. This would allow two things. Uh, first violation, the judge could order pretrial or community service or the fine and jail time. And on the second offense, um, there is automatically a fine and jail time up to and not more than 30 days. So it adds some strength to our trying to clean up abandoned properties and some of the things that happened in there. Notation that is posted on property. Yes. Already already can get it posted. Thank you. Any further comments? Ms. Walker. Well, both. Steve Arnett. Yes. Mike Scipio. Yes. Doug Fleshman. Yes. Greg Hudson. Yes. Connie Thompson. Yes. Greg Wolf. Yes. Jim Hughes. Yes. Linda Baldus. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the resolution relative to the Division of Justice Community Services Grant. Be resolved that City Council members of the City of Dunbar, West Virginia, hereby authorizes William E. Cunningham, Mayor of the City of Dunbar, to act on behalf of the City and enter to a contractual agreement with the Division of Justice and Community Service to receive and administrate grant funds pursuant to the provision of the Justice Assistant Grant Program for the Preservative Resource Officer at Dunbar Middle School, West Virginia for the year 2020. So moved. Second. Uh, it's been a motion by Councilman Fleshman <coughs> to approve the resolution to authorize the mayor to enter into an agreement for the Division of Justice and Community Services grant. Uh, seconded by Councilman Scipio. Any further comments, clarifications? Mr. Chairman, just so that everyone watching, we cover this in finance, but so you know this is the grant to help fund our PRO mm -hmm. prevention resource officer at the primarily at the middle school within our other schools as well here in town. Ms. Walker. Roll call. Steve Arnett. Yes. Mike Scipio. Yes. Doug Fleshman. Yes. Greg Hudson. Yes. Bonnie Thompson. Yes. Greg Wolf. Yes. Jim Hughes. Yes. Linda Baldus. Yes. Um, Item E, uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, table action. The uh, We have not gotten the certification of the Board of Canvassers of the Canal County Commission. They were still working on it at 4 o'clock this evening and hadn't finished. So uh, we will. Do that to the next council meeting. I make motion we table item E until the next council meeting. Second. There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio to table action <coughs> on 
one acceptance of the certification of the Board of Canvassers of Kanawha County, uh, State of West Virginia for the June 9, 2020 election was seconded. Uh, by Councilman uh, Fleshman. Any further questions, comments, clarification? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion here to <clears throat> we will add it to the next agenda. And if need, if need be, we will call a special meeting and we check with the election board and we have to certify prior to the next meeting. Uh, next item under new business is approval to lift the restrictions uh, on vacations. I'm so moved. Second. Mr. Chair, before we vote on that, just a clarification to come out of finance with the recommendation to follow the governor's executive order on vacation and, and its relevance traveling to hotspots. Councilman Arnold, do you want your motion to include that language? Make a motion we approve to lift the restrictions on vacations. I mean, I'm, we need to amend it. I mean, I'm just saying it. Okay. No, I don't need to amend it. Okay. I, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering if there's point, point of question, though. If we pass, and that's fine. I, I'm, I'm saying if we, if we pass it this way, then there are no restrictions. It's just vacation. Right. So we need to decide if we want to do that or if we want to amend it so it follows the governor's executive order. I'll just withdraw my motion that someone else makes the <laughs> word that he wants, wants to be worded. I'll make a motion to approve to lift the restrictions on vacations and also to follow the guidelines of the governor's executive order as far as hot spots. Second. There's been a motion uh, by Councilwoman Thompson uh, to approve lifting the restrictions on vacations uh, with the uh, to be compliant with the restrictions that's established by the governor for travel to hotspots. It was seconded by Councilman Wolf. Any further comments or clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. Next item is payment for hauling of the <clears throat> debris. I'll make a motion that we approve CV Shock Company in the amount of $3,000 for removal on all of the trash. There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio to approve payment to CB Shop Company LLC in the amount of three thousand uh, dollars to remove and haul trash from the salt bin site uh, to the Charleston landfill. It was seconded by Councilwoman Volgus. Any further comments, clarifications? Being done, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is payment to Charleston Landfill for disposal of the garbage dirt from salt. I'll make a motion that we approve the landfill, Charleston Landfill bill of $14,460.80 and disposal of the garbage and dirt from the salt. Second. There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio uh, to approve Charleston Landfill bill in the amount of $14,460.80 uh, for disposal fees of the garbage slash dirt from the salt bin uh, construction site. Any further comments, clarifications? Questions? 
Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, no. Uh, next item on the agenda is repair to the wine cellar caretaker's house. Mr. Chairman, I think to share our results from finance and then somebody else can choose to make motions. We, the finance, send this to the council recommending two separate motions. <coughs> One to accept the bid for HVAC so it's clear who we choose. And then also a second motion just to approve another 3,000 for the miscellaneous materials needed to repair the caretaker's house. So that, that's finance's recommendation. Can we just approve one amount with the breakdown? Sure. If you want one, I'm just saying that was our recommendation to split it so it's itemized as to that be it. I'll make a motion. We approve uh, repairs to the wine cellar park care, caretaker's house and the amount of $14,000 with. 10900 going to JP uh, Mechanical for the heating and cooling, $3,000 for other miscellaneous. I'll second that. That'd be $13,900. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Well, you got $100. <laughs> <laughs> Not to exceed $14,000. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the motion is not to exceed. Not to exceed. Okay, there's been a motion by Councilman Scipio to approve repairs to the wine cellar park caretaker's house uh, in the amount of fourteen thousand, not to exceed fourteen thousand uh, dollars, with ten thousand nine hundred dollars of that to go to the HVAC. HVAC system by JP Mechanical. Is that it? Yes. Um, and the other cost for uh, miscellaneous repairs, cabinets, flooring, replacement, and so forth, as detailed on the sheet provided uh, for the breakdown. Seconded by Mr. Arnott. Any further questions or comments? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. The motion carries. Next item on the agenda is portable kids sprinkle zone. I make a motion to approve the purchase of portable kids sprinkle zone for the amount of seven thousand seven hundred. Seven thousand and twenty. Seven thousand and twenty. Second. I'm going to give Doug a tip for now. I'm going to accept the duties. It's not over twenty-five dollars. <laughs> there's, there's been a there's been a motion by uh, Councilwoman Thompson to approve equipment for a portable kids sprinkle zone in the amount of seven thousand and twenty dollars uh, seconded by councilwoman baldness uh, any further comments or clarifications well no i should say we do have to run up the hall so keep that expense in there Oh, you're, you're throwing water on it now. <laughs> Maybe a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. <laughs> I don't want you riding me. Any uh, <laughs> any obvious presentations? Or... Next day you'll be riding with me. Oh no, you're not. Yeah, nobody else wants to talk about it, so I will. Uh, what we've done is we had intended. <laughs> Earlier on, is building some type of a portable sprinkle facility to, uh, to put out in different locations in the city to for the kids to splash around and play. We found some equipment online which really fits that need. Uh, we'll have a five foot sprinkle disc with a, a lollipop attachment that squirts and sprays. We'll have another five foot disc with a uh, fire hydrant that squirts and sprays 
and a alligator that spits and sprays uh, for the kids to, to play on. And uh, the water company has uh, been working with us, so they're going to furnish us a water meter that we can attach to a hydrant with uh, various valves and so forth on it that we can uh, make sure that we get the volume of water that, uh, that so the kids will have a good soaking when they're out there playing and, and this will allow us to separate the features out far enough to where they can move around freely and not not be all clustered up in one area uh, the health department uh, has given us approval to proceed with this because the water is not reuse water it's just a one-time use water supply uh, we will have somebody on site and the fire chief indicated that they would probably have a EMT or somebody of that nature there to uh, to monitor in case we get some scrapes and bruises and so forth so it'll be properly supervised and should be a fun event uh, once Councilman Fleshman has made it to the site to retrieve the retrieve it and we get everything ready to set up so we'll be posting a schedule as to uh, once we get it get everything set up and ready to go uh, where we're going to be uh, either putting it in parking lots uh, that we can utilize for block off sections of streets but we can't move it anywhere in the city and utilize it for wherever wherever we want to use it <clears throat> To make it accessible to, to all the kids throughout the city to come out and play. Are we going to have an age requirement on this? An age yeah. You can't go. It's a height requirement, but not an age requirement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think have as much water as short people do. You don't have to go for it. Are we getting water for the free water? Thing? Provide no, they're, they're, they're providing us water. Here, I just wondered. No, we're going to have to pay for the water. Okay. <laughs> uh, we can pump down the river then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, the health department's already been already. Okay. That's where that's the water comes from, anyway, down the river. Yeah, it kind of gets chlorinated and filtered and the elk. It's the elk river. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so we won't have to pay no, ma'am, we, uh, we, we can afford one. We can afford one. We just can't do it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other questions, comments? Can we put bubbles in? That's phase two. Oh, okay. So. But that's in the thought process? Phase two. Phase two is. If, I like the bubbles. If we if, if this works out and the council gets excited about it, we will look at purchasing the uh, foam garage equipment like we've used at the other facilities, and that'll make the parents happy because we can <coughs> we can we can yeah. we can create the foam and then they can run through the sprinkle zone to get all the soap stuff off of them before they before they get in their car. So. Uh, we're we're going to have to get this set up more before we go to phase two. <laughs> we have to vote on that, sir. Yes, sir, we do. Are you ready? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstention. I just, I'm just excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a little kid excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be good to have it, it gives us a chance to do something That's to get so Yes. 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 Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, <clears throat> due to the events we talked about in the last in the finance meeting, we need to I propose a motion, or excuse me, I'll make a motion that we add an emergency item to this agenda. Okay. Uh, there's been a motion by Councilman Hudson to add a, an emergency item to the agenda, seconded by Councilman Scipio. Any questions, comments? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, Mr. Chairman, the motion is concerning the sanitary board's 
annual budget from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021, and it is for a total of two million eight hundred seven thousand and five hundred dollars and we simply emotionally need to accept theirs they they by state code they create their own budget uh, but since we assess the fees we do review it and then accept it so it's a motion to accept their budget for two, two million eight hundred seven thousand and five hundred dollars i second it We just make that item F, or does it have to have it? It'll be G, F and then G. F was to add the or special C. item, or add oh, the emergency G. item, okay. and then G would be the actual item. Uh, there's been a motion by Councilman Hudson to accept the Sanitary Board budget for 2020-2021, seconded by Councilman Hughes. Uh, I'd like to apologize to the Council. I was negligent in getting that item on there i discussed it in the information packet and sent that to you somehow over the agenda and i appreciate you all adding that in because it's very important that it gets uh, gets gets approved so any further comments or <coughs> questions being done all those in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed no abstentions none motion carries Okay, Chief Moss. So good evening, Mayor Council. Just a couple things. Um, this time we talked about 90 day appointments, last couple of council meetings. That's not going to work out for us. One officer withdrew, and two of them weren't favorable to our liking after the background check. It's been discussed with the mayor. <coughs> we'll come back to zero on that, so we'll get with the clerk and the commission. Get a date set, even though we don't know what the cabinet's going to look like. Moving forward, we're on my captain class for us the first of the year 2021. The other thing we've been working on rules and regulations for the last couple of weeks. Uh, for instance, we don't have a social media policy, we do have one now. It's not been approved, but it's written. So once we get all that put together, we'll bring it to the mayor's safety committee, ordinance, whoever. Obviously, there's some things that need change that have been looked at over the years, and as we all know, there's changes coming. So we're just going to try to get ahead of it like we did with the use uh, of force and pursuits we changed March 2019. That's all I have other than Devin Anthony sitting here since I need a vacation day all right with me. You're welcome, sir. Oh, wait a minute. You'll take field, but you're going to take mine. Okay. Because Michael hassled me all the way there. Okay, Bill. How many people are we have lunch? All right. Okay. That's fine. Right. You can go with you. Here's a magic speed food. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Chief Thornhill. Thank you. Very good evening, everyone. Oh, boy. You got a minute? I want to tell you all how great it is to be in person. This is so much. Uh, the annual inspection that we do through the for the dam up there, the big one that we do through American Geotech, that should be happening here in the next week or two at the very most. Uh, it's an annual thing we have to do. But I did talk to them today, so they're trying to work it into their schedule. Normally they do it in June. They've been a little bit behind for the same reasons we all have. Uh, the water park, I did talk with Bernie talked in detail about that uh, about that metering and working with some fire hose and maybe getting that down where it didn't get damaged and so forth but we're excited about that we're excited to be part of it so, um, ppe masks and gloves i, I still have it if, if any of the departments need that let me know still have quite a bit of that stuff we're not using it near as much as we were and, uh, but any of those masks that, that that have been used, we ask you to put those in a bag and give them to us. We can recycle those back through the system, so we're not just throwing them out. If you give me ten dirty ones, I can send them back. They bring me ten clean ones, and we keep right in rotation. So you're talking about the N95? Yes, sir. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah, the N95, not the not the surgical, but the true N95 masks. Uh, 
uh, we have a method of cleaning those. That the county comes, they take them, they clean them, disinfect and all that. But we don't have to wait. I tell them I have 10 dirty, they bring me 10 new ones, take the old ones. So it just, that way we're not just continuing to buy this stuff. Um, and uh, last, certainly not least, I told you guys last meeting that the probationary firefighter had been tested you know, to come off of day shift. Um, this past Monday, I put him actually on the 24 hour shift routine. So, dating back, going back to when we were talking about the hiring and everything, how long does it take? Well, him, it didn't take long. He worked, he, he very smart, picked up things really well, and we were able to progress very, very quickly and get him on the ship. So, that's all I have. I'll, I'll take any more questions again. Uh, no. We had a discussion the other day. Now, is he fully certified now, or is he just a baby? He just can work shift work. He's just working shift work. He's not. He's not fully released and fully certified to do the okay. job yet. But he is working on a 24 on 48 off instead of being there every day. And that that's the second part of the training phase where we actually train on hands on on the job. 24 hour shifts. He's, you know, he's put into positions where he you know, drives a truck, he has to make decisions, but he's there under supervision still. He's not fully released without that supervision. Do you have any idea how long you anticipate it will be before he's? The standard on that is six months, six months from the date we hired him. He is progressing along very well so far, so it may. Maybe I'll get it done quicker than that. Um, but the standard on that is at the six month mark. And that worst case scenario from, from the day we heard. So we're not we're just a couple months away. It will it definitely will be before the fall comes in. So great news. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Chief Cornell has a uh, <clears throat> trample man that he's been trying to get rid of. Can we not include uh, this in the splash park thing? I saw it last night, brother. Did you all did you put up a fire park for your man? No. Okay. It sounded like a bad idea to me. It sounded bad. Sorry. Well, we'd have to end up having about four EMTs out there if we did. Yeah, we just have a fire department over all the time. Well, they'd have to have the whole department down there if you did something like that. They give us something to do. They can't squirt them with the big hooks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, sanitary board, Mr. Dawson, and then you can say what you got to say, and then you can go home and Thanks, rest sir. your body. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, last week, we took care of quite a bit of paving in the Rocks Atlanta area, got some drains properly fixed, and some roads repaired that we had over the winter. Um, we're getting ready to replace a 24 inch blood valve, which is quite large, so we're getting ready to do that. And um, other than that, we're running the street sweeper and um, normal maintenance. Take any questions if anybody has any. I saw that street sweeper today. Yes. Look like you have ever run a full of dirt. He may have had a full hopper. Yeah. He's a fairly new operator, so we're trying to work with him and well, we teach know him. We know where he went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're working with him <laughs> to get him trained properly. Okay. 16th Street. Yes. How you doing on the sleeves there? The what? On the sleeves. The rings. Oh, the, the rings. Uh, that is probably the next thing I'm going to start jumping on. I had a um, guy that was off today, and this is a short week anyway, so we'll probably start back on that hopefully next week. Very good. Uh, and we did get the drain placed yeah. at Travel Launch. I'm glad to see that. Yes. Now, down about one split, what are we going to do with that? I don't know. We've been talking about it. Talking about, are we going to do anything? Well, that you said you thought it could probably fix with paving. I think that the, the water part <clears throat> can, but what, what about around that telephone pole? It looks like road and coal. Going I can't do anything street. with but there's no sewer there. The sewer's on the street. The sewer doesn't run down past that pole? Not in the college. Okay. okay. So who's going to take care of that? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Any other questions? Taylor Road. Tell him the positive things. 
Oh, thank you oh, very yes, much. Yes. He's already told me. Yeah, I was <laughs> oh, oh, just a question about a, a uh, drainage problem in his alley this just, morning. And, uh, uh, it's it's there. It. Yes. Taylor Road, I am waiting on a dry spell. If I get in there and move any dirt, that whole thing's going to slide. So as soon as we get some dry weather, I'll get in there and fix that. You get drain in there, that way you wouldn't have to worry about it. Well, you got to remove part of that hillside and get a drain in order to I don't want to buy a house. Two years for bringing things. Two two quick questions, Max. Yes. I don't want to hold you up. Uh, Wednesday's meeting is it open public or still YouTube open? I don't know. It's only open to the six people. So YouTube only for non-sanitary board members. Basically, Pardon? so essentially, if you're not on the sanitary board, it's YouTube only, correct? Because um, that's six members. I mean, if you here. if you if there's someone that needs to come, I think there's someone that wants to come and ask for uh, a waiver on the sanitary bill for filling his pool and we've explained i think the office explained i explained what what the policy is and i said you can you can bring it before the board but uh, oh my word i'm still not happy here it's on the field that's up to the board and make that rendering okay. if, if, if they Tell want the board tell him they that's usually what they say. Second question was, and it may be to Scott, I'm not sure, Lower Midway, not the property. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Are you close enough to it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're going with. Is, is that a state road or a city road? State road. Okay, because yeah. there's a drainage problem there, and I wasn't sure if that's our problem. Where's the drainage problem at? Well, I want to be careful because it involves. Barcelona Hills below the Barcelona Hills yeah. all the way back to the first house. So right, right. I was trying not to say the corporate that, that corporate property. That corporate property. Washing over on property. That's all, that's all DOA. Yeah, that's okay. good stuff. Okay. So, I wasn't uh, sure. I was just, oh. State Highway goes all the way out to the very end uh, where it splits off to Aaron's house and Caldwell's house. <clears throat> that's all State Road. Okay. Now, uh, Autumn Drive is a city street. Uh, Anderson's a city street. Uh, Farmingdale. And Farmingdale, oh, just oh, a oh, very oh. short yeah. stretch. There's maybe a couple hundred, maybe three or four hundred feet to the city street. Uh, the last house up on the left is not the city limits. It's out. It's outside the city limits. Uh, so. No, that's strictly a highway thing, and I think uh, Scott had his guys go out there and, and, and clean it up as best they could. But it's, I think at some point that old culvert's going to have to be replaced from all the way up at the, uh, the school all the way down to uh, where you're talking about the first problem is. Yeah. We've looked at that model board, and it is in pretty dire need of repair. It's causing a lot of water damage to one of the citizens here. Any other questions? Thank you. Bye. Watch this back and forth. Mr. Jones, you seem excited. We'll let you go so you can come on the grass now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, just let you know, thank you all for the approvals, you know, money for approved the house up on the park. Um, the COVID-19 spraying for the parks has been going on for about a week and it's going great. I uh, got another person starting tomorrow to do the same thing for we can do it seven days a week. I got the guy that's doing it now going to train her tomorrow. And right now we're just cutting away and taking phone calls and just doing what we got to do. Well, that that one person will be shifted to sprinkles out of the yes. operation. Yeah. So, just in the, in the interim, they'll be they'll be doing some of the uh, be doing some of the spraying, but mostly supervising the sprinkles out of the operation. Yeah. So, so it'll be multitasking. Yeah. Any questions? If people been asking about fall festival we've been uh, I've been soliciting for 
a grant for this year. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, we are proceeding with contacting the various performing groups to get them booked, see who's available and who's not available. Uh, the governor just lifted the, re lifted the restriction for um, fairs and festivals, and we're going to have to see what kind of social distancing is going to be in place around September uh, to see if we can even have a fall, feasibly have a, an entertainment venue outside uh, in September. It's, if, if the spacing doesn't get lifted, it's going to be hard to get out there and police the crowd and probably wouldn't have a big enough crowd to make it worthwhile. It's going to, it would be virtually impossible to try to keep, keep people spaced out. So, so we're, we're working with it. We're moving forward like the restrictions are going to be eased to where we can do it. So uh, we're just watching it day by day to see see how it, see how it pans out. Whether we do or do not have a fall fest, we need to do something that will walk away. From the library, we have Mike Thompson crew in there. Right. We need to work something in there. Yeah, Scott's got a plan for that once we, once we get the crews get caught up on the grass and the heat sets in, then they can start doing black pot and stuff on it. when it gets real hot. <laughs> Our goal was to have people doing black pot for the school. Um, but that's not that's not working the way we wanted it to. Can't get anybody to work for it. Um, next uh, Building inspector, Mr. Leishman, he's got good news for us. Good evening, everyone. My council. Uh, we talked about the finance. Taco Bell is moving along. Uh, a couple contractors have got their permits. Probably looking, I'm going to say, mid winter to open, maybe a little sooner. Uh, just really looking at what I've seen on my completion times on the permits. Um, good news today, I borrowed Jeremy from Bernie today, knocked down a house on Dutch Hollow, uh, and we're getting that cleaned up, so we'll be, we'll be working on it tomorrow. I'm hoping to get the deed to uh, 196 4th Street on the corner of 4th and Dunbar back in the mail this week in Florida, and as soon as I get it, uh, we will knock it down too. Two of them gone by the end of the month, hopefully. And one of them is grants. So, and since we're using our labor and uh, some of the sanitary board, it won't be as expensive as it normally is. Uh, the issue up on Lower Midway was dealt with in court last week. We're still <laughs> dealing with it. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's it's an issue, but we're, we are resolving it. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll get it completely resolved by this end of this week. Um, that's about right off. That's about all I've got right now. If I ask any questions on anything. The house on Fourth Street. Then behind that is it the Junior Order Mechanics Building? Is that correct? Junior Mechanics. Yeah. yeah. Do we have that, or what? Do they do something with that, or is it just empty? As so far as I know, they're not doing anything with it. Um, that doesn't mean it's for sale or anything, though. Well, then the empty lot behind it. The, the one that we just moved in, too. I know who owns it. He had talked, I talked to him two or three years ago, but he, he expressed some interest in putting a uh, business in right there, a, a grooming center for animals. Cat and dog, mostly, I guess, and maybe a uh, that called daycare. Uh, so, with that fourth street, and then with the mechanic building, and then with that property, does that make a pretty good sidewalk? Once you get the other two houses right on that one fourth street before the alley, okay. yes, that was, that was the, the house we're tearing down, and then there's two that face fourth street right. before the alley. 
So you would have to purchase those two plus the junior mechanics plus that other one. Yeah, if you could get all of it, it would be a great business to look at. You have plenty of uh, storefront parking there. Um, Big enough for a Dairy Queen? I want Dairy Queen. No. Uh, probably not. Not by their regulations. They they make some pretty outlandish size requirements. Last time we checked. The Taco Bell site wasn't quite large enough for Dairy Queen, was it? Not according to Dairy Queen, they were pretty proud of their products. So they think everybody in the mouth is going to be there. They, they want like an acre and a quarter or yeah. something. So, you know, but they wanted it for nothing. Okay. Okay. I was you know, just thinking maybe that make longer for people. They've got. Uh, I've talked to the landlord, I deal with the model of these houses too. Uh, we'll probably be getting some more. They'll be donated for a demo. He buys a bunch of them, sight unseen, and when they come up as junk property, basically, uh, he'll just donate to us. If someone has a house and they just want rid of it, they just want to give it away, and it probably needs to away, but they just want to give it away. No, I haven't called you, and then you make the <coughs> Yeah, I'll well, just take a look at it. Now, if it's, you know, completely full of asbestos and everything like that, I'm not going to touch it, because that's where I'll be running my expense. That house I won't own the book of being having over 200 bucks, and it costs almost $9,000 because it makes some asbestos out of it. So sometimes they're a good deal, and sometimes they're not. But if not, you might know someone to rehab it, or why <coughs> just direct to you. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. If you come give a call, I'll be taking a look at it. Thank you. You, um, as you mentioned, the lower midway court ruled Thursday he was not in compliance this morning. He's, as the order was now, about late afternoon, going by, he was closer. But, uh, does the judge correspond with you about the next step? Because I, I have not, I spoke to him this morning. He told me to do a remediation order, which I did, and took the bond up. And he had contacted her for his stamp of approval. Uh, his signature. So I do have a remediation order remaining on my desk, uh, but I have not heard back from him on what he wants to do with it. With because there was another step that was going to occur prior to the remediation. Yes, that's what I was curious of. And I have not received any information on that. Okay. So. He was he was working diligently today. Loading up and hauling stuff off, yeah. which saved us a lot of money. So, uh, more than likely, he's going to revert back to where he was. And then at that point, once he stops hauling stuff up and cleaning on his own, then we will intercede with the steps of the court court mandate. But it's, it's the court order was to clean it and to keep it clean. There was no expiration date on it or anything like that so my feeling on it is he failed to accomplish what he was told to do by the day so he's in violation of court order um, and I spoke with the judge today and he wanted to charge him with one thing I suggested he might want to talk to our prosecutor before he pushed that charge to make sure it was an appropriate charge for what he had done mm -hmm. Bottom line is this property has no respect for the city and our views at all for that. And he, like I said, there was three of us there this morning. Um, it was nowhere near the compliance with the judge's order, so you can tell he doesn't take that serious either. So. Uh, I have some mixed feelings on that. I think there's there's some underlying issues there uh, that I really don't want to go to on the camera. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, but uh, in my discussions with him privately, you know, after everybody's left the scene and stuff, we've, we've had a couple of talks. And, and, and I just, I think, well, like I said, I think there's some underlying issues we probably need to look at too and discuss. Um, but I'm fully on your side that he does need to start doing what he's doing. We, we begged with him, pleaded with him, and everything you could do. Help him out, talk to him, all my cars, and it's uh, unfortunately falling on deaf ears for the most part. And I, you know, and I'm familiar. I, I think by the end of the week, regardless of what we do, it's going to be right back on the book. 
We are putting liens on the property every time we clean it up. And the judge will sign the the order that he said he was going to sign. So, like I said, he is as of this afternoon around one o'clock. It was 100% better, but he's he's still hiding stuff behind the stairway and so forth like that. So, I guess I just want to give him the chance to spend his money and his time on it all before we we go, we go in at the end of the week or Wednesday or whenever it is and finish up what the court order on Thursday. Yeah, because it costs us several hundred dollars in man hours and dumps and equipment and all that to do a remediation. But and I'm you know, the mayor there, if we can get this guy to spend his own money time on it, let's do it. I know it's an eyesore for the neighborhood, but if, if we keep pushing and pushing and pushing, uh, we're going to break it. We've reached breaking point one way or another. Oh, any other questions? 1904 Main Avenue. The White House. I'll be calling Bell for. I've got another one for the board up. No, there's people living in this one. The one with all the, the one with all the junk around. They just keep That's 18 and 2. Pardon? That's 18 and 2. Well, that's the only one painted on that side that faces Main Avenue. It's the white one right on the highway. With all the junk around that you can't miss. They've got court to last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they've been called the court on how many times and never showed up. Let's, uh, well, we got to do the five days, so we're not. Well, if, if they don't show this time, we'll get a case to stop. It's, uh, the, that guy is worse than the dead man. Yeah, he is. Well, I don't know that, but it's bad. Oh, it is. It is 1802. Yeah, it's just yeah. like talking to a wall, talking to that guy. He just turns his head and ignores you. That's all. That's what he's worth to do. Anyway. Okay. Mr. Elliott. Council, Mayor. I just wanted to tell you, last week for four days, we picked up 84 tons of garbage in this town. Five or six trucks, the recycle trucks of just furniture. And then on top of that, pulling the limbs every day and pulling the grass every day. So my guys are busting their butts and doing their job they're supposed to be doing. We need some help. We're going to need some more people and nobody's applying. Got one guy that called me today. I want to talk to you more about a CDL driver. So, other than that, that's all I have. If anybody has any questions, I'll take care of it. Did you get the chip right No, they sold me the wrong trigger. It's supposed to be in the morning. Or go the key. Well, that was key switch. Switch. Quick switch. Yeah, I did too. They sold the one with uh, the key switch they sold me, did not mm -hmm. have the glow plug warmer. I had to go back and exchange it out. And it takes two or three, four days to get. You lost the last. So you can't get employees. That's your problem. You need them, but you can't get them. Correct. Everybody that has applied, as soon as I tell them they're going to go take a drug test, I never want to. They never want to call me back. <laughs> Anybody out there interested? They need to get over you. Or call them. Okay. I've got applications for the garage. It starts out at 8.25 an hour for the garage crew and then works, works on from there. Hey, you need to stop unemployment. Yeah. So do I go to work? The so it runs out in like a week. First of July, $600. It does? Yeah. But the brown car can just save money. The garage people never call me. Neither one. The extra six hundred. Yeah, oh, the CARES Act. Okay. <clears throat> I thought they were talking about extending that from the sixteen weeks to another thirteen weeks. Yeah, that's what I heard. Justice yeah. said the other day when I heard it. He said it was a six hundred dollar money from the short. Yeah, they're killing us. 
by the time you figure out if I put two trucks out there with trash man, trash man, that's six guys right there. Two on the limb truck, that's eight. Uh, four on the grass crew, that leaves me three guys if all three guys are here to do everything in the city. And there are two of them are out picking up furniture every day and putting it in recycle trucks, so that leaves me one to run. That's because they all want new furniture once they got that six hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's couches and chairs and refrigerators yeah. and washers all over this city. I've never I've never seen so many couches. I've and personally chairs. picked up ten refrigerators <clears throat> or freezers this past week myself. I thought the junk man always got to. Uh, I thought the junk the job prices are down they ain't oh, coming out picking oh, those up. That's your well, man. Uh, that's your junk man right there. That's right. I'm picking them up and taking well, them to the truck. Unfortunately, that's what you have in some of these houses that we have issues with is people going out and grabbing that stuff, then piling it up around their houses and scrapping it and salvaging it. So, uh, now the big thing is we've stopped putting couches and chairs and stuff in the Packer trucks because it's been messing up the hydraulics, which makes it more complicated to get all this stuff picked up with the dump truck and the recycle truck so uh, it's just just a manpower thing and just being overwhelmed with the prosperity of the stimulus checks what was 40 times a week is now 80 plus well everybody you can't buy lumber right now i mean you can't buy porch lumber we were working on the porch these three more 16 footers, the closest ones were in Parker. Uh, Mr. Like a time on their hands, money in your pocket. Okay. Is that it for Mr. Elliott? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Council comments. Maybe we'll start with you tonight. I don't have a thing. Mr. Jim. I like the big money first two witnesses. Mr. Jim. Good. I was not that excited about the flags on Dun Martin, but I'm thrilled about the splash park. <laughs> the flags I can live with, but that splash park is pretty awesome. I'm done. I have nothing to see. Mr. Greg. Just remember uh, for this, I mentioned this last year. I don't know if anybody's left watching, we've been lengthy, but Friday is uh, Juneteenth. That's a key part of our nation's heritage and history. So just a reminder for our citizens to remember uh, Juneteenth and know what it means. It's not taught in school, but hopefully you know what it means. June, it's June the 19th, it's Juneteenth holiday. Just glad to be here. I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm good. Okay. With nothing else to come before the council. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, for the good of the order, if there is no other change business, I'll move that we adjourn this meeting. Meeting adjourned. Let's go.